Welcome back to this Clouds Garage. In this video, I have a 60, 66 Le Mans, Pontec Le Mans. So any A body from 64 to 67, it's the same generation, second generation. This is going to be exactly the same. We're doing front springs and shocks on this car. So let's begin. All right, now to jack this car up, you go here with the frame rail, jack it up, then put a, drag, a jack stand over here. You'll see underneath here, right there. And I also have a jack underneath holding the engine K-member up, just slightly, just as a precautionary measure. And once you do this, grab the car and shake it a little bit to make sure it doesn't go in, you know, it's solidly up on there. And also, uh, in the back, you, I put chocks in this car and put the e-brake up. So this is also a GTO's exact same car too, I forgot to mention that before, but it's the same exact car. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. These are 19 millimeter lug nuts over here. All right, so we just turned the wheel all the way to the left because we're gonna take this caliper off and hang, hang it to the side. All right, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go inside where the vent area is of the rotor and I'm gonna use a little pry bar just to pry this out to give us a little wiggle room to take this caliper right off. So you can see this play in there, now you go ahead and take this off. These sliders here are Allen, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. I'm using impact with the swivel. Top one's out, now the bottom one. Right, I'm going to use a pin to drive this out. Same thing here. Go ahead and grab these, pop them out. And this thing just comes right out. There's a clip back here on this one. So make sure that one goes in there. I'm going to put a little bungee here. And I'm going to put it through the control arm here. Go through the caliper here, and I just like to put it through the other one up here, just like that. So you're out of the way. And this hose is not kinked, and it's not the weight. To the, the weight of the caliper is not resting solely by the hose. Next is the end link. This is a 12 millimeter on top. Put an open end. And the bottom is a 14 millimeter. Go ahead and take that off. First thing in order, take the tie rod off, grab your dikes, my favorite tool in the, in the shop, love dikes, strain out the cotter pin, grab the cotter pin from the other side, grab this bitch, and I have new cotter pins, so I don't care if I ruin this one. It's a 16 millimeter castellated nut, take that off. Now put my pickle fork in here and whack this bitch like she owes you money. Just like that. Now take the cotter pin off the bottom ball joint on the control arm. Straighten the bitch out. Grab it from the front and tug. Pay attention there. Now, since we're here, I'm going to take the top cutter pin off. Go 
is that one. That is a 22 millimeter nut. So I'm going to turn the wheel manually all the way to the left. I'm going to put my open end there. Like I said, that's a 22 millimeter. And crack that loose. Now, I'm not going to thread this all the way out because the tension of the spring will help me pop this ball joint out. It's going to rest on this nut over here once um, this ball joint is loose from the spindle. It's a 19 millimeter castellated nut on top for the top upper control arm ball joint. And same thing here. I'm just going to thread it out. Not all the way. Just so I can pop out. That's good. Pick a fork up here. And again, the BFH. You know what the BFH is, right? That's right. Big freaking hammer. <laughs> and tap that bitch. Just like that. Now the bottom control arm. Same procedure. Just like that. Now I'm going to put a little jack underneath here, right in this space, to hold the control arm up so, it doesn't, so the spring doesn't pop out. And we're going to take this whole assembly off. I'm just going to jack it up a little bit. Like that, leave it there. And now I'm going to pop. I'm going to take these castellated nuts off and pop this off. Get that later. <laughs> now you can push this up with one hand and grab the rest of this with the other and just pull it right off. This whole assembly comes right out just like that. Now we're in the engine bay. This holds the shock up here on the upper control arm. That bolt is a 9 16 so I'm gonna go ahead and impact that off now. <coughs> just like that. And you got a washer and a rubber bushing. Now the bottom of the shock here, it's on the control arm, under the control arm, it's two 13 millimeter bolts. Now if you see the camera shaking a little bit, that's because I just farted and it stinks, so my camera go might be passing out. <laughs> that's one. And that's two. All right, now these things, you can't pull them out from the bottom. That's because there's a little coil in here, in between, outside the shock over here. A little bit of a spring-assisted shock. So, it's gonna, just going to have to lay there for now. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everybody's clear and you don't stand in the way here. I'm a suicidal clown, so I don't give a crap. I'm just going to lower this jack, and this is going to lower down with it, the spring. Take most of the tension off the spring. And then... I'm going to try to take this spring out, and once that's out, I'm going to take the back bolt off this control arm off. Now, this spring is huge, so there's no way this is going to pop out, but always take precautions, precautionary measures when you do this. It's not this clown's fault somebody gets killed. So proceed with your own risk, at your own risk. Now to pry this spring out, be very, very careful to know a lot of tension. And also, this shock is in the way. Sometimes what I do, I leave it in there sometimes, but you can also hang it from the top, or just push it in and out of the way. Just like that. Just wedge something underneath there. Just like that. Perfect. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray some brake cleaner in here on the, the, the bottom of the control arm where the spring perches. 
and just clean it all out because this is very dirty and if you have say like a little nut in there or something these are the lock nuts that go from where the shock ties into on the bottom now if you have like a say a washer or a nut in here and you put the spring on the car might sit a little differently on one end higher up on the other, on one end than the other so make sure you clean this whole perch over here nicely so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up now all right all right now over here you have to index the spring so you have to put the end of the coil spring has to sit near here see there's a bump here that goes up so you don't want to go past the second hole here you have to be somewhere between this hole and that hole and also the same thing on the top of you you have to index it on top so just take a look at where the bump is on top and do the same thing these are 19 millimeters we can take the control arm off now so we could put the spring compressor on it and I'm putting an open end on one side and the other side is a three-quarter socket crack this loose <clears throat> gotta use that crown strength baby yeah so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off all right this now do this side I'm going to leave this on and I'm going to try to whack it here with the hammer. I'm going to use this air hammer with this flat chisel over here to pop up, pop these bolts out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just like that. Yeah, baby. Made sure work of that. Now let's do this bad bitch right here. off. Alright, I'm going to put a adjustable wrench over here and I'm going to whack it with the air hammer on the other side so it'll come out. So I'm talking about baby. Who's your clown daddy and what does he do? All right, now I decided to leave that in the way it is because the headers are in the way too. So I, as long as I have this side unhinged, it should give me enough clearance to put this in. So I'm going to go ahead and use a spring compressor to put this in right now. Tool number 27035. This you get from AutoZone or from your auto parts uh, dealer uh, free rental. So these are the springs and you're gonna have to go in here and it's not you can't actually pry this thing because these are too big sometimes you get away with just prying them in and putting them in and this in this car you can't do that all right as you can see here there's one arm that's shorter than the other so the clothes are going down this way so you want the shorter arm in here and the longer arm on top so this is straight all right, now I'm just going to put this rod down here, thread it in. And now I'm going to put this inside the spring perch. Make sure you index it by putting the end of the coil where I showed you. So you index this by putting it between these two holes here. Just like that. The next thing is, you get this and the washer sit under here and just wedge this underneath. You get you have these two you have these stops in here and these go on a perch in the bottom. All right. Like I said, these tabs, you have to wedge them in here. So you have to sit in there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down now. I'm actually going to turn it from up here. I'm going to turn it from up here. 
So I go higher up on the spring to get it more compressed. So I'm just gonna go up, up on the coils with it. And that should be good over there. It's getting tight down here. It's good right there. All right now underneath here, all I do, all I gotta do is tighten this up. This is a three-quarter inch socket over here, so I'm gonna impact this on. Go clockwise with it to compress the spring, and make sure you're in the middle over here. Make sure it's loose. When it's loose, you're connected. You're, you're contacting both springs, both coils over here. When this is loose, that means you know you're centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down now. Now that it's all tight over there, be careful this is a loaded bomb. Don't stand anywhere near this in the front of it. And it's got to position it to clear this sway bar over here. Check it up. Now push the other side of the control arm in. Now I just gotta clear the sway bar. Always have a friend handy to help you out when you get in tough situations. Here you go. The bolt I took off on that one side, I'm gonna wire wheel it. I already wire wheeled some of it, so I'm gonna do the rest of it. I'm gonna put the bolt in now. In. Just tightening these down. Now tighten this bolt down. And you're good. I'm going to reposition the jack now that both bolts are tight on the control arm back there. Remember, we only took one off because the other one, the headers were in the way, so we got away with just angling, angling the control arm down. I'm going to put the jack over here now.
All right, now that's the upper perch where the spring sits. You can see there's a lip up there. So I just have to get my pry bar over and under that lip and index it correctly up there. Okay, now I'm gonna persuade this bitch to go in further where it's supposed to be. And right there. So I'm gonna jack it up a little bit too in a second. All right. Can you check that? So as it's jacking up, just put tension on it, and it's going where it's supposed to be. Keep going. And it's good. It's sitting perfectly. Where it's supposed to sit. All right, now that I got sitting in, all you have to do is take this off and unthread it. Make sure you have tension over here and also clears this little fork in here that, you, that the spring compressor has on the bottom over here and sits on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. So you can see now the tension is going to come off here. And that drops like that. <laughs> the rest I'm just throwing out by hand because I don't have space here to put my impact gun. So I'm just going to throw out the rod now from the middle. And there goes the rod. There goes the fork underneath. All right, I'm going to decompress the spring now a little bit. So to make room for this, so you get this out. I'm just going to use a little pry bar to get this coil a little more open and pull that tool out. It's filming? Push down though, Jerry, because if you if it slips, it's going to hit a fender. So it goes into my chin? Don't worry, you little youngster. Just like that. All right, now to put the spindle back with the rotor. I might have to either go further down with this, with the jack, or higher up, depending where it's sitting. Uh, or you could just do one of these jammies and now I'm just gonna get I'm gonna catch the nuts, the castle nuts I might have to go up a little more because I have a little space over there with the jack, I'm gonna have to go up a little more with the jack I'm gonna put the lower bow joint castle nut on first so I'm also doing that uh, we're just gonna jack it up now a little bit just to put this Top a nut in. Keep going. Keep going. All right, just like that. We're good there. I'm just gonna catch this nut and get back to this later. I'm continuing with the bottom ball joint. It's good. Good. Now tighten the top. Now I put the end link in. First thing I'm going to do here is put some anti seize all over this because they tend to seize up and rust up. So that in. The bushing. Washer. Spacer. Put 
We're gonna have to lower this car a little bit to get this in. Washer, bushing. Finally, bushing and washer and nut. Now jack it up once you have everything in there like that. Jack until this control arm doesn't move independently with the chassis. All right, one more time. All right, we're good. Now tighten them down. And you're good. Put the tie rod in. All right, now sometimes this will spin, there's like a little ball joint in here as you're tightening this down. What you gotta do is you gotta, you could put the pry bar here and press down here, uh, the end of the pry bar and the spring, and press down on this tie rod over here to get some tension here, then you could start tightening this down. This one, I didn't have that problem. So, just in case you do run into that problem, that's what you, have, you gotta do. And now over here, just gotta put your cotter pin in there. I'm also gonna grease these joints. So we turn the wheel all the way to the left. This is the passenger side. So we have room here to put the brakes back on. We'll put some anti-squeal on here. This goes in like that. All right, put this on. I also sprayed Brake parts clean on the rotor. Make sure there's no grease on it or anything like that. And now I also cleaned the, the sliders with the brake parts cleaner. And now I'm gonna lube these bad boys up. Some brake caliper grease. Brakes up and down just to get the slider in. And it should go right in. Good. You go from the middle, and I have somebody up, up on top that's going to catch it for me. There. We're just gonna finger tight this. You gotta put the bushing and the washer. And that's gonna be finger tight for now until we do the bottom two. Then we're gonna go back up to this one. All right, now I gotta lower this a little bit just so I could get this to line up with these two holes over here, the speed nuts. So that should be about right. Looks like it.
Now don't go too gorilla on this because they are after all speed nuts. You just want it to tighten. And make sure you align everything like I do with the aligning tool. And go on all angles when you do that, go all around because these are a little tricky sometimes. And we're good. All right, now here, you got to put an adjustable wrench here, or you can put a regular wrench, and to hold that from spinning. This is a little bit. I've got to do it in three minutes. <clears throat> and we're good. All right, so that's how she sits. Beautiful ride right here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Like me and share me. Adios!